In this video, we're going to continue our discussion and analysis of um, problem solving methodologies and process improvement. Um, in particular, the learning objectives will be to review the problem solving approach used in both uh, DMAIC and Kaizen event um, process improvement activities, and then to focus in on specifically the elements that make up a process. We'll also look at the uncertainty that poorly performing processes have in the workplace and the, um, and the influences that has on a, the beginning of a process improvement project. We'll also introduce the fallacy behind uh, pointing at people performance as the root cause way to improve uh, process performance. I'm now pulling uh, visuals from the uh, Business Process Improvement Workbook. And in earlier videos and discussions that we've had as a class, we've uh, taken a look at comparing uh, the Lean Six Sigma uh, demaic based approach towards process improvement to the lean thinking approach of the Kaizen event. And um, we've even uh, given you a little summary sheet comparing the two and, and certainly throughout the rest of the course and the rest of these videos we'll be breaking down specific tools and activities that are covered both in the Kaizen event and uh, demaic based problem solving. Uh, what I've got in front of you right now is the beginnings of a drawing that I'd like to help describe how all data-driven process improvement methodologies, um, uh, what their approach is. And this is regardless of whether it's DMAIC, Kaizen, they all follow the same approach. And in step one, uh, there is some current state observation and measurement that takes place. You've got a poorly performing process that's creating frustration. And while you may have experienced it yourself or worked in it yourself, you want to get as thorough an understanding as possible. So you're going to go out and get data. And that data could be qualitative or quantitative. By doing that, you end up uh, reaching step number two. And in step number two, our goal is to use this uh, data collection and observation to have greater insight by the team on what's really going on. This then, this insight then leads to step number three, which is from this new greater insight with the data that's been collected on current state, um, you have a better chance of identifying the true, real, impactful root causes that are preventing the performance gains that. Um, that we're seeking in future state. With these fewer variables that we call root causes, um, we then in step number four, try to build solutions that attack those root causes. We do this with DMAIC, we do this with Kaizen, with all data-driven problem-solving approaches. Once root causes are determined, we start to develop some proposed solutions. We rarely have the time and resources to be able to implement all of those solutions, so in some way they need to be prioritized. And then from that, uh, those prioritized solutions, um, future state changes are made. The solutions are, are implemented in essence. After those solutions are implemented, we now, no long, we now no longer are in current state. So we... Um, we measure this new future state to, to see what performance is like. Uh, and hopefully, performance has gotten better. When we're doing process improvement, the assumption is that uh, there is frustration in current state. We have poor performance. And that performance may not currently be measured, uh, but it could be measured. And it's low. So let me draw that. Yeah, so that's a pretty poor drawing of a needle of performance, but you get the idea. Um, we've got a process that's too slow, too error-ridden, too costly, too time-consuming. Uh, and if we were measuring that performance, the needle would be pointing somewhere low. We might not know what that value is now, but we could go out and get it. And that's really what step number one is all about. After we follow the remaining steps in future state, we should see the following. Again, 
my apologies for the crude drawing, but uh, performance should have moved. It should be better. Um, I'm not saying that performance should be at the highest level, uh, at perfection. I'm just saying that the needle needs to move in a positive direction and stay there. So it's not just about moving the needle of performance up and then seeing it backslide back down. Um, in all process improvement methodologies, we start with a process. We make sure that we understand what the low performance is, and then we try to move to a future state in which performance is made better. With that in mind, let's now hone in on some of the elements that make up a process and can lead teams into struggling uh, at the beginning of a process improvement project. All right, I've cleaned up our screen a little bit. In our face-to-face -face classes, what I'll frequently do is I'll throw up these five questions about uh, process improvement and what a process is. And then the class and myself, we, uh, uh, we, we discuss what, what you came up with for each of the questions. So I encourage you now to pause the video for just a moment, uh, take a look at each one of these questions and uh, come up with some answers on your own. Uh, and we'll discuss what you came up with when we get back. All right, we're back. Um, did you do what I do? Then and not actually answer the questions. Just uh, keep pressing play uh, and hope that the answers are given to you. I, I get it. I do the same thing myself. Let's walk through each one of these questions, come up with some answers that we can all agree upon, and we'll use this information to help us uh, better lead process improvement project teams to success. So let's take a look at that uh, first question, which was, uh, what is a process? Remembering that we're trying to answer this not just uh, for academic purposes, but because there's often confusion around what a process is and it can lead to some problems when your process improvement team uh, kicks off their project. So what do you have for what's a process? Uh, did you have any of the following? Did you get this? All processes have a start and a stop, uh, a beginning and an end. Did you also get that uh, all processes have a series of steps that create some sort of output. Now that output could be uh, it it could be a completed product, a completed service request, but there'll be something that gets that that gets shot out at the end at the last step here. Complex business processes often have multiple outputs for different types of stakeholder groups. Speaking of uh, groups uh, that are receiving that output, did you also have the following? Did you have that uh, the downstream from a process, there'll be a, uh, a stakeholder that is receiving that output. Now I drew it as a person, but it could be a department or another group that receives this output. It could be a system. It could be uh, an, another business system that receives the output from this process. But uh, at the end of a process, there'll be some stakeholder entity that is receiving that output. Now, that may seem obvious, but it does address one of the biggest concerns that people have at the beginning of a process improvement project, and here's what I mean. There's often confusion around where the first beginning step is. Uh, with a poorly performing process, different stakeholder groups will think differently about where the first step is. And it's this beginning and end of the process that helps to define the scope of our initiative to help define what it is that we'll be investigating. Uh, we've got a follow-up video that shows some of the dilemmas when you don't have clearly identified scope. Scope often is defined by where the process begins and ends. The end is easy to understand because it's where that handoff from the process to your important stakeholder groups that are using the output occur. Uh, it's easy to see and easy to understand. But the beginning step, there's often confusion. Um, and while there's confusion, knowing that there will be confusion is one of the first pieces of the puzzle that need to be resolved when you kick off a project and acknowledging that there may be some differing opinions about where the begin is on a poorly performing process is an important kickoff consideration. Let's go back to some other things related to what a process is. Did you get the following? 
All processes have a series of steps to create the output. There's some logic to the flow. Now, I have just uh, a three-step process here. Um, most of your complex business systems are going to have way more than three steps, and they're not always going to follow a nice linear progression. There could be parallel activities. There could be loopback conditions. Um, it's it's rarely as uh, simple and as pretty as what was drawn, but uh, we definitely have a series of steps or activities that are performed. Finally, all processes repeat. I can't emphasize this last statement enough. Uh, when we're working on a process improvement initiative, um, we should be working on a process. It's got to have a beginning and an end. There has to be some sort of output that's created. Uh, there's a series of steps that creates that output, uh, and it's happened over and over and over again. Um, both of the problem-solving methodologies to make and Kaizen break down and are difficult to use if you are building a process from scratch where it has never repeated before, or you're building or implementing a solution for a one-time uh, phenomena. Processes repeat, and the more that they repeat, the easier it will be for you to do process improvement. The easier it'll be for you to collect the current state data and information that describes the poor performance. The easier it'll be to collect the future state data that shows that you've actually made an improvement. All processes repeat. All right, so I've cleaned up my screen just a little bit. And now that we have a better understanding of what a process is, um, let's take a look at one of those other questions. What is process improvement? Well, we kind of hit on it earlier when we talked about those problem-solving methodologies. Process improvement, simply put, is taking poor performance, taking a process that has poor performance, or, or sometimes what I'll call high levels of frustration, uh, take a process that's frustrating or performing poorly, and identify what those root causes are so that in future state, performance can increase. Although it's not just about moving the needle of performance, we need to keep that needle at its higher performance in future state. We need to sustain those gains. So again, with that simple drawing uh, to help to describe the answer to what is process improvement, um, sometimes it's clearer if we take a look at the opposite or the corollary. What is not process improvement? Process improvement is not just the act of uh, assigning teams to work on tools and activities. If those tools and activities don't give you a sustained gain in future state, that's not process improvement. If you um, start with a solution that has already been identified and don't go through the investigation of understanding what's the performance level at current state, what are the solutions that are needed in future state to create that sustained improvement, that's not process improvement. Just going out and implementing an already established solution, it's not process improvement. Here's the last big thing about what is not process improvement. Process improvement is not the blame game where we identify a particular person or a particular work group and point fingers at that group saying, you need to improve your performance. You are the bottleneck. You are the slacker of the system. Here's what I mean. When we're dealing with process improvement, it's an approach that uh, takes a look at many, many variables that are affecting that low performance that we see in current state. If it was just one variable, an individual person or an individual group, we wouldn't need to use these complex problem-solving methodologies. We could just use simple problem-solving approach where we isolate the variable, reduce or eliminate the variable, and move on. But here's the thing. If it were that simple, somebody, some group, some team would have already tried that. You have tried this. You have pointed the fingers at individuals or groups, and it hasn't created the sustained gains that you were looking for in future state. Process improvement is not focusing on people. It's focusing on the variables that are creating an environment that make it difficult for people to sustain those gains in future state.
I sometimes say for process improvement to work well, we have to be hard on the process and we have to be um, understanding of the uh, concerns and frustrations that our process workers are being endured to go through. It's the process that's creating the poor performance. It's not the people.